Hi, and welcome to Answers News for July 3rd, um, 2017. It's July. It's July. It's almost it's July. July 4th, almost Independence almost. Day. Oh, yeah. that's right. Shouldn't we have some, uh, you know what, we should have some fireworks. Don't you think we should have some fireworks? Like emoji fireworks. Do they emoji have fireworks. Like okay. Everybody needs to um, actually go on here and give some emoji fireworks because it's the 4th of July. Uh, so we always try to say some things here and um, just talk nonsense. Until we, get, until we get all the people, people are coming in. They're starting to come in. Numbers are starting to go up. Mojis are starting to come across the screen. And my phone just notified me that Ken Ham is live. Oh, yes, we are. Yes, you are. We are. Right. And, uh, okay, Good at uh, that. numbers are going up quickly. You know, a lot of people now uh, watch this, and they know it. We, have, we do it regularly. It keeps them up to date. Mm -hmm. And we also put the um, links for all the articles. Mm -hmm. There's so many articles that come out each oh week, gosh. isn't it? Amazing? It's hard to decide like which ones we're going to talk about. Yeah. But it's it's a really good resource for everyone. Everyone who watches, yeah. good resource to go to all these links and see the latest sorts of things. You know things. what the worst is when you read this really long article and you're like, oh yeah, this could be good, and then you get to the end of it and you're like, no, that's not really relevant. Yeah, or, <laughs> like, or I've just, just been like, all no, time. this is too involved for what we're doing, and yeah. so yeah, so, yeah. yeah we, we do really try to um, filter these out. Somebody said no sound. Well, the sound, we working. tested it. It's working. working. Yep. Yeah, the sound is working. Must be must be your problem. Press something on. <laughs> press things. That's he what can't hear you. That's, that's what I do. Oh, he can't, <laughs> he can't hear me. Think about that. Okay, I don't know what to do about that. What do we do about that? <laughs> all right, are we up to? All right, we're getting up there. Okay, so okay. Uh, George, I know you're going to start here, but I just want to make a statement. If I had have been on oh, Noah's Ark, there'd be no cats. Because no, I hate cats. I if you watch carefully, when you have a cat in your house, you can see it. It's plotting to take over. It is. We don't have cats. Besides which, one of the things I'm so thankful for, my wife is allergic to cats. Then I don't have to worry about having a cat anywhere near our house. So is my wife. She, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's... Our daughter. I wonder that's if she, right. she. I wonder. Could that be inherited? That, that's a genetic. It's thing. Like the yeah. whole pickle. It's a good thing we have a geneticist thing. here. Okay. okay, so we're going to talk. <laughs> All right. We want to talk about cats. So we're, we're going to talk. About this cats. comes from Science News. DNA reveals how cats achieved world domination. So they're taking over the world. Not just Apparently. plotting. To they're right. Yeah, I tell you. Know, I told you that they're plotting. You yeah. can tell. Just look at this sly little individual. But what they did was they basically looked at the mitochondrial DNA, and that's the DNA inside the mitochondria in your cells. Um, every. Um, human being, um, all the animals, plants, every, everybody, everything has this. They have their own mitochondrial DNA, and it's only inherited from mom. So it basically is used to trace maternal lineages. And so they use this to try to figure out, like, where the cats we have today sort of came from. Um, because they actually are able to get mitochondrial DNA from mummified cats, because... In Egypt, they were... They, they mummified were, cats. They were, yeah, <laughs> right. they did. To and me, that's so, the best cat anyway, a mummified one. <laughs> And, anyway, and is it true that, that come on, that, cat lovers, put your. <laughs> well, some, there's somebody who got on here and said oh, they Start. love cats, but they must have a problem. <laughs> so, is it true that all cats are related? They are. So they they're are. Yeah. all part of. the So there's family. one family. What's the family called? Feliday. Feliday. Mm -hmm. yeah. So cat, how many cats uh, yeah. were needed on Noah's Ark? Two. 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 That's it. Two Even cats. the big cats, you know, like your lions and tigers mm -hmm. and things like that. And then you've got your bobcats, you've got your, your little house cats. Yeah. They're actually all part of the same kind. Actually, it's interesting. The Cincinnati Zoo has one of the best collection of living oh, cats that I've right. seen in a zoo. It really is quite a collection. And you go to the Cincinnati Zoo, and it's interesting. As we walk it's got around, an odor in there. Well, it's got a terrible <laughs> odor. Yeah, it does. Well, you go in there like this. But as you walk through, you know, and I've had our grandkids with them say, you know what that looks like? It looks like a cat. Do you know what they look like? A cat. There's yeah, big cats, yeah. fluffy cats, naked cats, you know, different fat shades cats, of cats, <laughs> skinny cats. Well, and even when you watch their behavior, even if you watch the behavior yeah. of a lion or a tiger, it looks like you, the cat. It looks like, I mean, you yeah. know it's a cat. Yeah. So, so, but, well, look what the article says here, right, right off the top. It says, a tail hidden uh, in the ancient uh, cat DNA uh, suggests cats were probably first domesticated in the Middle East. Yeah. You know what? We expect that. You know, yeah. I mean, you go back to Babel, right there in the Middle East, mm -hmm. early civilizations were right in there. I mean, they were right. doing this fairly early. And and somebody said they're two of the sweetest and brattiest cats in existence. Yeah. You know what? They've got you around their little okay. paws. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so basically right. the article talks about the importance of them, probably initially for but, vermin control. Um, but it's, the, it's another good example that Noah only needed two cats on the ark. All these cats are related. Right. They're looking at the history of cats. But again, speciation is spread. not evolution. Right, it's just well. speciation. And oh no, I want to get this out. So how they, okay. <laughs> how they spread all around the world, right? 
probably by people taking them to locations, but also them on boats, right? Because they're vermin control, because everyone knows there's lots of rats and things on boats, so it kept them under control. So they traveled to various areas, and they can kind of trace their lineages, basically, just like they can in humans. To me, it's a shame they didn't go extinct, and the dinosaurs weren't alive. I apologize, people. (laughs) Well, you know, naturally, they get the dates wrong. You know, all throughout here, they're talking 9,000 years, and they've got, you know... Uh, 10,000 years and things like that. Right. Yeah, you always have to be discerning of those yeah. things when you start reading things. Yeah. That should throw up a red flag right away. Yeah. Somebody kind of somebody crazy. said they like cat, cats. Thank it you tastes people. like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, right. moving on. Um, so this comes from Alabama.com. It says, Alabama 60,000-year-old underwater forest spills its secrets in new documents. Of course, we would dispute 60,000 Yeah, that's years. right. The day well, is right there. Yeah. The red flag, red flag. But this is exciting, yeah. uh, it's neat exciting stuff. material. It's yeah. a cypress forest that they basically found underwater in the Gulf of Mexico, mm. and they think it was Hurricane Katrina that had actually moved the no, sediments. I, I don't think it was Katrina. It was, was another it, one of the... Uh, well, it was one of the hurricanes. Yeah, no, Hurricane a, Ivan. Hurricane, hurricane Ivan. Hurricane yeah. Ivan moved a lot of the sediments and things, so it uncovered basically this yeah. forest that had been buried there. Yeah. And, you know, this actually makes sense in an Ice Age perspective. You know, the right. flood triggers an Ice Age. age. You know, it takes time to build Ocean up. levels are lower. Ocean levels. So you get forests growing in some of those areas. Right. By the time the, the Ice Age has peaked and has waned, it covers some of the stuff back up, sometimes fairly rapidly. So people need to know, climate change is not a modern phenomenon. There's been climate change oh, yeah. ever since the flood in particular. Oh, yeah. The flood, oh, yeah. the flood triggered was massive one, climate yeah. change. I know as I was driving in today, I heard some debate going on in the news about climate change or whatever, but if, if they have the wrong history, they're going to have the wrong interpretation of climate change. Yeah. If you don't believe in the flood and don't understand the Ice Age, you're not going to understand climate change. Right. What was neat was when they first found this, after they had, you know, when it was first found, that the, I mean, it was actually the trees had been protected from decomposition by the mud, so mm-hmm. they were actually almost fresh, um, kind of just sealed away underwater. Yeah. Uh, See, now they're decomposing. That, that's right. right. You know, the Ice Age is probably the prime factor, but you have to consider that there could have been mudslides and other things mm-hmm. involved right there sure. as well, sure. uh, you know, to help slide some of this stuff out. Hey, um, the, you know that cat article, to get back to cat. There we go. <laughs> you know the cat article we're talking about mummified cats from Egypt? Mm-hmm. Somebody here made a statement that I think is really true. Uh, they said that um, actually, the, well, someone talked about the Egyptians worship cats, but someone said that... Um, Cats uh, actually uh, ordered the construction of the pyramids. You see, I think that's true because cats are out to plot to take over the Here world. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> so. enough conspiracy theory. All yes. right. So. You know what? People are. T- there's lots of people talking about cats here. They love talking about cats. See, I told you. Yeah. Okay. Why aren't they talking about dogs? Where's the no, dog no, lovers? No, because, no. because cats are sly and they're trying to take over the world. Okay. That's why. <laughs> so Dr. Andrew Snelling, who is our geologist here at Answers in Genesis, has actually written an article um, just last year, late last year, on Alabama's underwater forest. So mm-hmm. it takes kind of a biblical creation perspective mm-hmm. um, on this. And, um, and we have the link in there for that. We'd encourage you to go and read Dr. Snelling's article. Dr. Snelling is a PhD yeah. in geology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got his PhD from Sydney University. He's done an incredible amount of research. He's done 25 years worth of research at the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting. <laughs> Because they didn't want him to do any research at the Grand Canyon here recently. Yeah. No, it's interesting. And, uh, He's applied for permits year after year, the, with yeah. many permits over the years. He's done a lot of research at the Grand mm-hmm. Canyon for, you know, researching all sorts of aspects in regard to the layers and mm-hmm. and uh, the sandstone and you know the sand grains and yeah. and, sh- and showing, for instance, that uh, these some of these sandstone layers, like the Coconut sandstone, is not uh, due to uh, desert right, dunes. Right. It's underwater dunes. That's and, right. Looking at how some layers the fit, angles fit directly on other it. layers, and there's millions of years missing. Well, in 2013, he applied for a permit. When you go to the Grand Canyon, the whole area has been uplifted, mm-hmm. and those sediments you can see where it was uplifted, and they're all folded, and they're, they're, they're not broken like you'd expect if it was over millions of years and they laid down where millions of years ago. And, they and you'd expect heat and pressure over millions right. of years to turn the sedimentary rocks into metamorphic rocks mm-hmm. and so on. And so we believe that this happened at the end of the flood. It was raised up when it was still soft. So he wanted to go down there and get some samples so that he can look under a microscope because actually you can tell from the the actual uh, grains right. uh, if they're deformed and other factors. Whether it was folded or fractured. Right. So, yeah. so whether it was soft when it was lifted up or not. Right. And he was denied the permits. 
and uh, we had, we suspected it had to do with his beliefs in creation, yeah. that because of his religious beliefs. Yeah. And so the Alliance Defending Freedom attorneys were able to get hold of the documents because they, mm-hmm. they had to legally turn them over and found there were professors they'd sent his proposal to who said, he's a creationist, don't, basically, don't let him in, don't let him do this. Yeah. And so, so Alliance, basically because he was a Christian, they didn't right. want him to do it. That's, that's part of what's happening all across mm-hmm. America, that loss of Christian freedom. Now, we need to stand up against this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Alliance Defending Freedom uh, actually sued the Grand Canyon National Parks. And, and the United the, States Department of Interior. Department of Interior yeah. because they were infringing on Andrew's religious beliefs. It was yeah. discrimination. Yeah. And, uh, and it was interesting. It, this has gone on for a bit, but... They finally backed down, mm-hmm. and yeah. they even sent a letter saying, "Yes, your your research is bona fide, you know, quality research, yeah. and all the rest of it." And so, in a in a few weeks, Andrew is actually going down the Grand Canyon now. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's going to have a video crew with him. Yeah, he's going to take these samples. But it's another win for religious freedom. Yeah. I encourage people to read the article. Yeah, and this article's on yeah. our website. It's a uh, Grand Canyon scientist creationist receives permits. Uh, you know, which is uh, it's. A, a nice conclusion to a long, uh, right. uh, drawn-out process. Well, that's, take, that's taken four years. Think about four that. Years, yeah. When they denied the permit. Yeah. You've got to be prepared to stick with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. praise the Lord for groups like Alliance Defending Freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had, uh, uh, there's other Christian attorney groups out there. We had two different ones that were involved with us when we yeah. sued the state of Kentucky because they discriminated against us in regard yeah. to tourism tax incentive. We won that. Uh, Andrew won this before they went to court because yeah. they realized they were going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. And the good thing now is, too, that um, actually in the federal government in America, uh, the administration is more sensitive to this and mm-hmm. understands mm-hmm. that yeah. there's this discrimination going on. So and, what, and really, what are they so afraid of? I mean... They, I mean, you know, in some ways, yeah. I don't think they wanted him to do it because they're concerned about what he's going to find. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, <laughs> but I was, yeah. I was talking to Andrew this morning, and I said, "Okay, you go down the Grand Canyon, you get these samples. What if you can show very clearly under the microscope, uh, and you can show that these were deformed when they were still soft? Because mm-hmm. he he believes he can do that. He believes, and mm-hmm. if if his model is correct, if our yeah. model based on the flood is correct, that's what it's going to show. We'll see, uh, but we believe it will." I said, what are, the, what are the secularists that millions of years people are going to do? And he said, well, think about soft tissue in dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. What do they do with that? You know they what always done with do. That? They yeah. still deny it. Oh, there they must be some it. way it's preserved because <laughs> right. we know it's this old. Yeah. yeah, so they're going to do the same thing. While somehow there was a way in which it deformed and it didn't show mm-hmm. you know, what we thought fractures. it would show. It's yeah. some sort of unknown mechanism. Yeah, and, when, that's and, the, the and the thing is, when it comes to origins, you can make up anything you want in that sense right. simply because you're talking about the past. Right. So they can they come up with there. any theory, any yeah. idea that they want. I don't say theory. Theory is a supportive way of evidence. Right. Any right. idea or belief right. you want. Yeah. So. Okay, so this next one comes from, it's an Apatheos blog. Um, by it's about Australia. Captain Cassidy. Um, it says, Lord Snow presides over Australia's new census, the real good news. Okay, what? Lord Snow is a cat, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> a white one. A white cat? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, today's, today's program is all about cats. Actually, what's interesting, they've, they've done oh, research God, in Australia, and we've actually got another article that has the actual research in it. We yeah. just thought we'd yeah. use this interesting right. article because he makes snide comments against people like us and mentions me. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, cl- clearly the bias of the secular humanist is coming through. Right. right. So. right. But the statistics do show, when you look at the research, mm-hmm. the same as what they're showing in America, mm-hmm. that the millennials, that, that coming generation, yeah. uh, they call themselves, many of them, non-religious Mm-hmm. And they say they belong to nuns, and there's an yeah. increasing number. There's a change that's going to occur in our whole Western world because the millennials are coming through. They've been educated, brainwashed in a secular education system. And so increasingly, there's a big gap between what they believe mm-hmm. about uh, religion versus what the other generations right. believe. They're yeah. saying they're non religious, <laughs> but there's no such thing as non religious. Well, well is that's they? right. Every, everybody's religious. Mm-hmm. When they say they're, they're a nun, it means that they don't realize what religion they really are. Mm-hmm. I decided to come up with an acronym for that. Uh, nuns, N O N E S, is the non official neo evangelistic secularist. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're secular. They push the view. They sometimes just don't realize that they're doing it. Actually, in the new series of books that you were one of the editors of, along with yeah. Roger Patterson, World Religions and Cults, Volume yeah. 3 is specifically about the secular religions. Mm-hmm. And I, I keep pushing this point. 
yeah. people, we need to make sure that everyone understands mm -hmm. atheism is a religion. They have beliefs. Right. They it, believe it, everything sure happens by natural yeah. processes. They believe there's no God. Yeah. And sadly, it that, is on the rise. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it is true. That research is showing a very sad trend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at England. Look what's happened in yeah. England. 50% yeah. of people used to attend church. Now it's down to 4%. Mm -hmm. Those sort of trends are happening throughout the whole Western world, actually. And really, it's because we've handed generations of kids over to mm -hmm. a secular education mm -hmm. system. They yeah, and they and they see it in the news items. That, you know, they see it at secular museums. There's hosts of places. These people are being drilled with it, and they're not they're they're not learning how to counter this kind of stuff. They're not learning uh, biblical apologetics, how to defend mm -hmm. their faith, and they just tend to go right along with it. In, sometimes. You know, I was just speaking at a conference in North Carolina, and. Uh, when I, um, uh, uh, after I spoke a number of times, they had a testimony time, mm -hmm. and this was at uh, Billy Graham's conference, Center of the oh, Cove. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a special sort of, sort of weekend conference, you know, and they do a number of these uh, throughout the year, actually. But afterwards, at the testimony time, there were many people that said things like, I'm going to go back to my church, and we've got to start teaching apologetics. Mm -hmm. Many people have come up to me and said, I never taught this to my mm -hmm. children. We're not teaching this in our churches. A lot of our Sunday yeah. school material mm -hmm. is just fluff and stuff. And yeah. that's why what yeah. we do at Answers in Genesis is unique, it's different. Our four-year Bible curriculum, our VBS, what we emphasize apologetics, biblical authority, uh, teaching chronologically, evangelistic, it's all of that put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just finished Operation Arctic um, at our church, which is this year's VBS. And that's it's AIG's amazing. VBS. Yeah, Answers yeah. in Genesis VBS. And it's just amazing to see the content that's in there and really connecting the Bible to the kids and helping them defend it, Not that mm -hmm. it is the most unique book on the planet. And we do compare it to other mm -hmm. religious books and help them see how it is mm -hmm. unique and the one true book. Well, we just got a testimony from yeah. a major uh, Southern Baptist church in Atlanta where they had mm. 3,200 kids. Yeah. And they said the number of kids that committed their life to the Lord, and they yeah. said they're, they're going to use ARG's VBS next year yeah. now because that yeah. was the first time they had and they said it was amazing to see yeah. the response because yeah. it's very different. It's yeah. meaty, it's apologetics. Yeah. Well, you know, I was at the ARC yesterday and uh, there, there was a family right ahead of me and we struck up a conversation. They were from Austria. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, did you come over to the United States? You see some different sites? And I said, they said, we're actually coming here just to see the ARC and oh, we're going to wow. go see the museum as well. And uh, what it is, they brought two of their kids with them. They said in Austria... You know, secular humanism, atheism is just drilled oh, yeah. onto people left and right. Well, and they wanted to teach their kids, hey, the, you know, there is the truth of the Bible. And a lot of times it's tough to articulate in some of these places. Well, uh, and we've got an article a little bit uh, mm -hmm. about another country over there in Europe That's yeah. right. about yeah. how right. secular about is. We'll talk about yeah. that. I can't believe the way they're regulating Christian schools. Oh, my goodness. Just amazing. Yes. We'll come to that in a moment. But by the way, the reason we wanted this particular article, you can put, there's yeah. a link there to the actual research but about Lord Snow provides a, uh, presides over Australia's new census because yeah. it gives you an example of how the secularists are gloating mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that, that their religion That's right. uh, is so mm -hmm. indoctrinating the coming generations. And well, you know, they, hopefully they, it'll they stimulate people. You in here. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. said, but hey, it's good news for Ken Ham at least. Creationism flourishes where ignorance and scientific illiteracy are followed up. Well, well, that's because uh, they said the state of Queensland and New South Wales showed the most Christian responses. And I come from the state of Queensland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Well, you know, it's interesting. Right the, toward the very end, they say, ain't a bit of good news a welcome thing at the beginning of the week? You know, because they're thrilled right. with the fact that that's people are becoming more secular. Yeah. But, you know, by what standard is something good? Right. You, know, you, you see, if uh, it's, you know, somebody said here, I teach four to six year olds and some school using your curriculum. I'm so grateful for the solid Bible teaching I get to pour into their uh, little lives. Another one said, I taught Sunday school with ARG ABC and now the kids are going to college and, you know, question for Bodhi, what would you say to someone who argues that biblical years were much shorter, therefore the lifespans were not as long? Do you have any resources talking about this? Well, actually, uh, isn't it in the Answers book we talk a bit about that? Yeah, we talk about the ages. Uh, yeah, in Answers book volume page, yeah. two, it's mm -hmm. the blue one. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I think yeah, you and, me uh, and Dave Doc, 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 Dr. Menton mm -hmm. that, uh, that did that one specifically. But, uh, I mean, the years were still the same, same years. There's no reason to question any of that. The Bible never talks about a, a shift in year length. Uh, or anything like that. But I mean, people were living 900 years, but we also saw them consistently start to drop right. off. Yeah. Uh, you know, Noah was the third longest living uh, person. You know, his father actually was a lot less than Noah. He mm -hmm. died at 777, but then Shem was 600. You see him drop. And some of these bottlenecks at the flood in the Tower of Babel mm -hmm. was, was kind of significant yeah. as well. Uh, so my guess is genetics are probably the main factor. There may be other, uh, other things, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, okay. 
All right, this next one comes from the side post. Um, study finds the non-religious can be more closed-minded than the religious. I mean, as soon as I read that headline, <laughs> I immediately thought, oh, look, think about what we're seeing in our culture right now. Yeah. Those that disagree with the more conservative worldview are so intolerant. Yeah. And it's not really non-religious. That, that's right. It's right. really secular it, religion. Yeah, it, right. It's Can't the religion of non-religion. Right. right. Yeah, the <laughs> right. secular religion. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, so the the article was published in Personality and Individual Differences, and it was t- entitled, Are Atheists mm-hmm. Undogmatic? And so what it's trying to look at is, and, and for some things, it was interesting, they found the Christians scored higher on um, they're more likely to disagree that there are so many things we have not discovered yet. Nobody should be absolutely certain his beliefs are right. They disagreed with that, Christians. Well, that's because we believe the Bible is God's word, and we're certain about that's that. Right. Well, and that and that's interesting. I mean, here they said the researchers found Christian participants yes. scored higher on a measure of dogmatism, in other words, speaking with authority, yeah. than non-religious participants. You know, a couple, uh, practical example, when I debated Bill Nye. Mm-hmm. If you remember, Bill Nye was asked the question, what would cause you to give up your beliefs? Oh, if I found an out-of-place fossil. I'd already given an out-of-place yeah. fossil in, oh, yeah. in, in the presentation. We have it in the book, too. But anyway, if I found an out-of-place mm-hmm. fossil, um, and my answer was nothing. And mm-hmm. it was interesting how the atheists mocked me for that. Yeah. But think about it. I'm standing on the authority of the Word of God, and I'm sure about what I believe. Yeah. Bill and I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. That's right. I mean, he was ready to admit he doesn't really know. And when he was asked yeah. the question... Where did matter come from? He said, I don't know, it's a big mystery. And then they said, Ken, what's your response? And I said, well, there's a book that tells us where matter came from, and that's the Bible. So you see... logic, I mean, a whole host of those things, he can't explain it in his own worldview, and yet he holds to it pretty strictly. I mean, he went, you know, so far as to have a debate with you. Well, it says they basically, um, with the non-religious, that they they tend to not want to look at views that are contrary to their own, and mm-hmm. really consider those and integrate those. So, yeah, because they just they don't have anything to do with that. Um, they really deny, they really suppress yeah. the truth and unrighteousness, and they don't want to have anything. But said here, atheists showed less propensity to be right. able to imagine arguments contrary to their own position and find them somewhat convincing. Uh, when right. atheists were presented with two seemingly contradictory statements, they read one is very true and the other is, is very yeah, false. It's like, um, in other words, they, they talk about the fact that students need to be taught to think critically, but they don't want them taught exactly. to think critically. Because right. if students are taught to think critically, they'd start to realize evolution's a belief. Right, so yeah. it's like, this is right, this is wrong. That's I mean, so that's being very... The, they're told what to believe, and they go out and they live that way. Do you know what the Bible says about Jesus? He spake as one having authority, not yes. as the scribes. Not and the we scribes. can speak with that authority because we have the authority of the Word of God. And that's right. what the atheists hate. And so what happens is, it's interesting. We, you know, take the conflict between... Uh, uh, Christians and others concerning the marriage issue, mm-hmm. right? I will say marriage is a man and a woman because God created marriage. God invented marriage right there in the book of Genesis. Jesus quoted from Genesis. And as soon as I say that, those that support gay marriage will say, you're intolerant, you're being hateful. And then they spew out hate against me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. not the one being hateful. I'm standing on what I believe. Right. But they want yeah. everyone, they, they say, you've got to allow gay marriage. Wait a minute. I believe gay marriage is wrong. Can I have that belief? Well, now you're being hateful against a Peter's person. No, I'm not. But then they're all, they yeah. spew hate against me. It's incredible. Yeah. 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 That's very, an intolerant. Very intolerant. So that article was not surprising mm. to me at all. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't to me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this next article comes from the Evening Standard, and this has kind of been an ongoing story, but it says, Charlie Gard, European court rejects parents' plea to intervene in battle to save terminally ill baby. This is a very, very sad case um, out of the UK where there's a 10-month-old baby who was born with a mitochondrial disease um, and, and you know, he's basically on life support to keep him alive. And so the parents want to take him to the United States for a trial therapy, which is really one of his only hopes. But the government in the UK has decided, no, they will terminate the baby's life. Mm-hmm. And, and they're overruling... Parental rights? Yes. In other words, the state is acting as God. Yes. Interesting, just before we came in uh, here to broadcast this, I saw that President Trump tweeted that he was willing to help. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. They've already raised like millions of dollars, I think over a million dollars to come here to the U.S. to do this. And and the government's saying no. And I'm just 
gobsmacked yeah. in some way because I but cannot believe they're they overriding the they're, they're thinking from a secular perspective. Jeez. Survival of the fittest. There's no right and wrong. There's no God. Do whatever you want. Yeah. If you feel like killing somebody, well, who cares? Well, yeah. euthanasia, euthanasia yeah. is legalized in a lot of European oh, countries yeah. and it's rampant mm -hmm. throughout Europe and uh, even for, even for children, if they want to die, you know, well, and choose to die. And, and well, so. and they're trying to say, well, that that Charlie's being exposed to continued pain, suffering, and distress. Which I have no idea how they actually measure that, because the kid's on life support. It's not like they know what he's feeling, so to speak. And who decides? Well, well wait a minute. Doug, yeah. Didn't the didn't the poet, wasn't the Tennyson, who said, "Nature red in tooth and." In a yes. call, mm -hmm. describing evolution, mm -hmm. and Carl Sagan said the secrets of evolution are time I and mean, death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the evolutionary process is one of pain and suffering and disease and animals ripping each other apart. Why? Why should they be worried about that? Well, that's why they want to yeah. let the kid die. I mean, really, they're just yeah. using that as an excuse, and and yeah. then it becomes very arbitrary. Who's the authority? Who decides mm -hmm. this? And yes, there is pain and suffering in this life. But that doesn't mean you just end your life. I mean, God can use those for right. good purposes. In our See, and we've got to understand something. The more our culture abandons God's word, the more this will happen. Oh, yeah. And when you think about what's happening uh, in America, the state basically says the education system now is the religion of the state, which is the religion of atheism, and they've captured generations of our kids, mm -hmm. and they want to control our kids. They want to determine what they're taught. If you want to see what could happen in America if future. we abandon the foundation yeah. of God's word and you have the wrong people in mm -hmm. power, look at this next article. Well, oh, yeah. Okay, well, I was going to say one more thing. The Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children, which is where Charlie's at, says, well, we plan to provide every possible support to Charlie's parents as we prepare for the next step. I'm like, how about letting them have the authority over their own child and letting them, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just At least and, try and, and, You know what? The, the Bible says there's a time to die, a time to be born. Mm -hmm. God's in charge of life. God's in charge of life and death. I mean, sometimes we can look at our own, like, um, you know, uh, our, our own parents or whatever uh, I was just talking to someone the other day talking about one of their parents is sort of in a vegetable state but it's not our right to right. take that life mm -hmm. yeah. God will yeah. God knows the time that that person's life is to be taken yeah. from this mm -hmm. earth yeah. God's in charge he's sovereign yeah. all right this next article comes from um, Heath Street it says Swedish Christian no, Swedish Christian kids banned from saying grace at mealtimes can no longer say amen I mean, I think this is think a Christian it. preschool. This is a Christian preschool Salvation Army in Sweden. Preschool. Yeah, right. And they're yeah. saying our education policy. Notice what it says: that the the municipality supervisors in charge of education noted that Christian activities violate Sweden's educational policies. Mm -hmm. In other not words, not Muslims, not atheists, Christians. Not in other words, Christianity they is are, outlawed. They are yeah. attacking Christianity specifically. They're singling it out. Yep. Yep. It says Sweden's Education Act prohibits schools from having confessional elements during school time. You're saying grace. You're a Christian school. You're saying grace. So instead, what are they doing? Yeah. 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 That's what they're doing. Instead, the kids now sing a rhyme and give thanks to the sun, the rain, and the food at mealtime. Now they're worshiping They're forcing nature. paganism on them. Yeah. Forcing paganism yeah. on them. Yeah. 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 That is religious. And that, that is, is a religion. Not. Unreligious. But again, their thing isn't against religion. Their thing is against Christianity. That's right. And that's the problem. And, you know, one of the things they said in here is, well, you know, the, the, the kids that are there, they don't have the right to choose, you know, to, to not do this mm -hmm. or any, anything like that. They had the right not to go to a Christian preschool. Right. Yeah. I mean, that... Well, the parents don't have to send them there. And yeah. if they don't want to say amen, they don't have to say amen. Hey, I mean... Somebody asked me, is this being broadcast in the Creation Museum? Uh, let me tell you something exciting and tell everyone out there something exciting. By the way, George, because we're getting uh, near the end, we never get through all the articles, and then we, the yeah. ones we don't get through, we put to the next one. How about the next one, the last one here, you do the one on, okay. uh, on Mother's Milk, because that, okay, I know that you know that's cool as a geneticist, and I know you love that one. But in a couple of weeks, we actually, we will have set up a, a sort of a studio, if you like, mm -hmm. on the stage in Legacy Hall, and we're going to open answers news to those people coming into the Creation Museum so they can be a live audience. Be a live audience. And we'll do that every Monday yeah. and Thursday when we do it at 2.30, from 2.30 to 3. And we'll have a live audience and they can participate. Then I thought at the end, at 3 o'clock, uh, when, when the live broadcast goes off, then we can have questions from uh, the audience there too. 
a couple of us about maybe some of the things that were said. So that's going to be an exciting awesome, time. Yeah. I think because we get thousands of people coming every day to the Creation Museum yeah. and the Ark, and I think people are going to love that. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So let me talk about this. Was a really cool article about um, milk uh, of all things, and um, it's funny because it talk. It says milk is a mammalian innovation. Okay, it's not an innovation. It's a design. It's okay, a design. by God, By God. This is not some evolutionary thing. Um, that you know evolution figured out but human milk in particular is very unique and it has a lot of these certain mm-hmm. sugars in it that are unique uh, literally no animal has these sugars or this amount and this variety of sugars that human milk has mm-hmm. and what they found out is that there is a certain microbe and I'm not just talking a family or genre of microbes a specific species, species of microbe um, which is called um, Bifidobacterium longum infantis. That's why I wanted. Again? That's why I want you to talk about uh, this. Uh, <laughs> it's actually that's, that's actually a subspecies. Now that's not even a species. That's a subspecies. That as long as you provide it with these sugars, it grows in the baby's intestinal tract because the baby doesn't digest their sugars. They're because they couldn't figure out why all these sugars here. Baby's not digesting them. But yeah, it's not. Ba- it's not food for right, the baby. Not so food what, for the what baby, is it? But it's food yeah. for the bacteria in their large intestine. Which is and, necessary for digestion, right? Right. Yeah. And what it does, though, it helps them. I mean, it has this this particular subspecies of bacteria has 30 genes in it that are completely unique to that subspecies of bacteria. No other bacteria have them, just mm. that species, which is amazing in and of itself. And it causes them to be able to... Um, uh, it actually feeds the gut cells. So the bacteria eat the food, and then they produce products that feed the baby's gut cells. That's incredible. And, and keep them nourished mm-hmm. and keep them from um, getting uh, bacteria into their bloodstream. And they do all kinds of things to nourish the baby's um, thing. And then they try to explain this kind of, well, you know, how could this have happened? Because even chip milk yeah. doesn't even have close, yeah. what human milk does. Even though that surprises the world, they're like, yeah. oh no! But the whole the whole evolutionary explanation is, well, we needed bigger brains to do what we did, so therefore the milk yeah. had to evolve and the bacteria had to evolve so we could get bigger but, brains. But they and never that's just how. one. That's just okay. one little aspect of of oh. you know well, things yeah. working together. Just one mm-hmm. little aspect. Yeah. Well, one of the other aspects is you know when, when these things are healthy, you know, mm-hmm. down in the and baby's growing. intestinal mm-hmm. tract. You know, it, it fends off salmonella, listeria, yep. cholera, Good dysentery, HIV, E. coli. I mean, mm-hmm. it's incredible all the stuff that's going on here. Yeah. Hey, um, just to let you know that, yeah, someone asked, are oh, we still going to see you guys if you're in Legacy Hall? Oh, yeah, the cameras will yeah, focus yeah. on us. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't, don't worry about that. They'll focus up on, on us. But did you know it's the 4th of July already in Australia? Yes. It is. It is. It's the 4th of July. No, it's not relevant and to Australia. No, it's not relevant <laughs> to Australia, but it is the 4th of July in Australia. So, to end this broadcast, because we don't do this on the 4th of July, tomorrow, right. you know, we do it yeah. Thursday, right. right? Thursday and Monday. Yeah. How about we have the biggest emoji fireworks display that I can see on our phones here? Because it's the 4th of July, so everyone get on there and just put millions of emojis. We need firework emojis. Yeah, I wonder if they are. Can probably put explosions on there and things like this. I think you're kind of limited on certain ones. Yeah, Yeah, limited to what they let you do uh, here. And uh, as as we get towards the end of this, uh, so Thursday again at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. A couple of weeks we'll be doing it broadcast live from Legacy Hall Mm -hmm. with a live studio audience. Oh, here they come. I can see the the hearts coming. I can see the emojis coming across here. Uh, Isn't that fun? Uh, there we are. And <laughs> some of the articles that um, we missed talking about today, you'll see them in the links there, but they'll put them in Planned Parenthood. Weird Par- Ice Age Creatures. Yeah, and Planned Parenthood. Uh, Planned oh, Parenthood. that's a disgusting article. Just absolutely disgusting. <laughs> okay. So, with that, we're going to sign off. Signing off. All right. All right we'll see God you back bless. Thursday.